Hey guys, for just a little bit more money than I spent on this, I went ahead and bought this. Those of you who watch me regularly may remember last month when I said I bought three new airbrushes and promptly did a review on two. Well, in that month time, I have been using this TimberTech airbrush every single day. As a matter of fact, I painted most of this with it and I painted this up for this review. Uh, pearls and UVLS clear coat. What do I think of it after a month that I have used this every single day? Well, let's take it apart, do some spray outs, and then I'll tell you what I think. Okay, first things first, it's going to come in this box and all of that was packaged. All that you see here is packaged in there. These, the three and 0.8 needles are inside these tubes. And of course the nozzles and the nozzle caps are packaged in these little containers. Of course, I've had this one here for a while. So I'm gonna do a quick tear down on this and go over some of my thoughts before we get into doing some test sprays. So since I'm gonna tear this down, but the first thing I wanna remind you, tell you is, here's gonna be the first complaint that I have is the needle limiter. Like all of them, it works, but it's just a little sloppy because, well, there's an O-ring in there that holds tension and they never, almost never in Chinese airbrushes are correct. So this is the 0.8 needle in here currently. I was using it just a, a little bit ago. So that is the 0.8 and the 0.8 nozzle I'll pull out shortly. We'll take a look at those needles. And of course, all of this stuff is going to be really, really familiar if you've taken apart most every Chinese airbrush out here. And we're gonna go ahead and remove that nozzle cap. Now I will say this much, that despite the fact that it has given me no problems, there is just a little bit of looseness in these threads here, as you can probably see as I'm wiggling that, but when you tighten it down, um, I would suggest you use a little bit of beeswax or something along them lines to seal it and make sure it's down tight. And then the alignment has been just fine on this, as long as I've kept that tight. So this is pretty standard stuff. That's how you're gonna remove the nozzle. And this is the 0.8 nozzle. And this is the 0.8 needle. First, I wanna talk about the nozzles. All right, so all of the nozzles are, I believe, stainless steel, and they are all machined extraordinarily well. And they are very smooth on the inside and they are extraordinarily easy to clean because they are smooth, tapered all the way through with no ridges and humps. I'm gonna compare that. It's like, this is my Eclipse nozzle. So any of you who are familiar with the Iwata Eclipse, then you'll understand how these work. And then that one's from a Badger. That is uh, one of the detail ones from a Badger Patriot, I believe. And one of the things I like about this nozzle, I even like it better than the one in my Eclipse HPCS because when they screw this in, it creates a little ridge and paint and debris starts building up and it's not as easy to get in here where all I've had to do with these nozzles is take a striping brush, run through there and cleans them out rather easily. Now on the left is the 0.3 needle that came with it. This in the middle is the 0.5 and on the right is the 0.7. I'm going to first address this 0.3. That is a very, very long taper. And I'm, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna compare that to the taper on another Chinese airbrush needle. Do you see they both end their taper there? Do you see how much longer that is? So what I've actually done is I took this needle, I've been running this needle as the 0.3 setup which is just a little bit faster. While this technically is would be better for detail because the longer taper, the more pull you have to get to get paint out and the more gradual it will come on. I felt that was a little too slow for me. I like to work a little faster. So I changed out this needle or I have been changing out that needle and it has made it faster for me. So it now be, responds and behaves more like what I'm used to. I like my airbrushes to run a little bit faster. I don't tend to use super detailed brushes all that often anymore. 
on the subject of that taper. And this is something a lot of people don't understand about airbrushes. The longer and the more gradual that taper is, the, you know, the further you'll have to pull back the trigger to get more paint flow, which means it generally is going to be a little more linear and a little easier to control. When we get over to the 0.8, that is going to be a pretty heavy taper. And that is moving on really fast. And what I'm going to do over here to show you is I am going to compare that to the one on the right came out of my Badger Omni. For those of you who've been following me for a while, they know that I like my Omni for heavy coverage, backgrounds, uh, little modeling and things like that. And I wanted to get something that might be even a little bit more of a hoser than my Omni. And that's exactly what I got with this point eight. And it's, it's very forgiving. You can spray pearls, metallics, and all sorts of stuff through that point eight and flow out. And we're going to run some footage here in a second and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so we have loaded up the 0.8 needle and nozzle combination. And what I'm painting with here, I'm using Wicked Lime Green Pearl. So I'm spraying a pearl, a uh, very little reducer, about 5% to get that coverage in there. Now I've moved on, cleaned the cup real quick, and then I am now spraying UVLS High Gloss with the 0.8 needle and nozzle. So you're seeing this in real time, how I'm laying it in there with the airbrush. And that's asking a lot from a round pattern airbrush to paint a shape this large with a clear coat and expect it to come out smooth. But seeing that I have that very large needle and nozzle combination, felt pretty confident we could get a reasonably good finish on this. And I'll show you guys um, what it looks like when it's dry a little bit later in the video. Okay, so now I have just rinsed the brush out real quick and brought it in here and thought I would just lay it out using the 0.8 steel. Wanted to give you an idea of how big these patterns you actually can get in this. And we're only spraying at like 35 PSI here. And so you can get that effortless thick, thin to thick coverage, you know, like a t-shirt artist would use. You can get those really fast dagger strokes, um, you know, and of course, slowing down here to taper that off a little bit. But just wanted to give you an idea how much paint this thing will actually throw out. And, you know, kind of what you expect in line quality and something like this. But this thing will absolutely throw a huge, huge line with the 0.8 in there. I've moved over to the 0.3 needle and nozzle. Just want to show you guys. You can really get in here pretty tight. As a matter of fact, the line quality of this is very good. Bordering on excellent. I would say uh, I have absolutely no complaints about the thinness or the quality of the line I can produce with the 0.3 nozzle. And as I said, I would show out that speed shape later. That is what the speed shape looked like with the UVLS high gloss on it. I would like to, after it dries, probably do another coat on here, do a little bit of sanding to it. I see I got a little bit of trash in it, as you can see right there, a couple little dust nibs in there and I'd like to get those out and then do another coat on there and that thing would be pretty darn glassy. I almost forgot. This is the model AG183K. It's also another airbrush that's also made by Finga and Master also has an airbrush to match this and they sell replacement parts for this airbrush as well although I have not been able to determine whether they are using brass or stainless nozzles. Okay, so what don't I like about it? Well, the needle limiter, as I mentioned, although I never use the thing, so I don't know why it even bothers me. I'll just change out that O-ring right here with a little bigger O-ring and it'll be tight. I, I kinda don't like these removable cups. I didn't like them on my Grex. I didn't like them on Harder and Steamback. I, well, I didn't like the Omni or the um, Neo at all. But it's starting to grow on me. I just had to get a little used to the fact that it might take an extra step to remove the cup to get in here and clean this out. But you actually can do a better job cleaning it. So the fact that that's a little bit loose does bug me a little bit. But I've had no issues with it. I just need to make sure I torque that down fairly tight, a little tighter than I'd expect. What do I love about it? 
it is an absolutely versatile dream. My clips can't match it in the coverage I can get wide. My badgers, until you get up into the higher end badgers, can't come close to that line quality, the 0.3, until you get into like the Patriot Extreme or the or the Chrome or the Sotar or something along those lines. And quality-wise, this thing's a gem. I mean, it's the finish on it is, is pretty much flawless. I've got no issues with anything on the finish, no issues with anything on the fitment, except for the couple things that I've mentioned. So what's my recommendation? This is, uh, you know, off me to say this, but I actually, you know, would strongly recommend this. It, it's um, worth every penny I've spent on this. And I think as a beginner or as somebody who needs something for wide coverage has been around for a while, I don't think you can be hurt with it. I, I don't think you can find enough to complain about for this price point, especially that, you know, you wouldn't find a use for this. And honestly, it has replaced a couple of airbrushes on my bench. It's been sitting and used every day. It has probably 50 hours of work, actual work time in on this airbrush. But anyway, tell me what you guys think down below. And I'll drop you guys a link for this airbrush. That's going to be a wrap for today. I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. Y'all have a good one. Bye.